Well, we've just joined the realms of N-Gage as well as double O. Just picked this um, tabletop layout up based on an ironing board. Got some unfinished Metcalf, full box of Pico track, plus some leftovers, some fork underlay, rolling stock, buildings to go on the scenics. Wagons, coaches, couple of locos, some points, something else to add to the to list. Well, if you thought Hornby Ringfield carbon brushes were small, welcome to the world of Graham Farish Engage. They're the old, older ones. I bought two packs. which you can just see in the reflection of my lights and some traction tyres I just shot in the dark with those and hope that they'll fit my Lima 55 Deltic um, N-Gage um, I'm not quite sure so I haven't messed around with the N-Gage stuff I've got for such a long while I've only sort of ordered the bits that I, I knew I needed, but I'm not sure whether I need any uh, brushes for the uh, little pancake motor in the um, end gauge. But we've got a little LMS 060 tank that came with the items I'm now going to show you. That uh, didn't, it was a non runner. There's a little J94 which appears to run on just testing it on a controller on the wheels. I haven't tried them any round the track and uh, the little LMS was dead in the water when I took it apart I discovered that one carbon brush had worn away to nothing and uh, this, both springs are compressed um, there's a little damage to the uh, commentator shaft but um, I think I can probably just clean that up yes. which are the little Couplings and coupling springs that I noticed on a couple of the wagons I'd purchased. Uh, definitely some springs missing and the little LMS 060 is also missing a rear coupling and a spring from the front one so a pack of these was purchased. And while I was on the site trying to find some other bits and pieces I managed to get a pack of the Airfix style day pole couplings for my uh, Airfix Mark IIs, uh, the Mark II Ds, far more on there than I knew, but I think possibly these might also uh, fit the Pullman coach, which I had one of those come I bought. I have repaired the coupling that was on it, but just in case it ever does go, we'll see if we can retrofit one of these in place of it. But they don't do the little um, bars that clip over the top of the uh, couplings. So I don't know whether that will be a, one of these and a little minute nut bolt and washer job to uh, hold it in place should they need repair at a later date. But uh, I think there was about £6 for a pack of 20 which was a lot cheaper than uh, I think a pair on eBay were about a fiver with a postage. So it pays to buy a bulk sometimes. But we also got uh, a selection of flexi track, which uh, when I sort of costed the guys asking price, the, I took into account the remaining flexi track plus what was on the uh, model railway layer that I'll show you shortly. Um, I thought this and what he had on the layout was the pack of tracks remnants. But in actual fact, there's a whole brand new pack full of 25 lengths of N-gauge flexi track plus about I think it's 12 14 lengths um, and then some part lengths a few strips of cork and uh, a bit of mini trunk and I don't know what he was using that for but uh, there's also some like basswood underneath there um, and a while back I managed to pick up I think that's well, I think that was the fourth set 
that isn't new but there's a starter set up there as well which is brand new pile of track and a few points so basically we do have enough now for for an engage layout as well so little box of goodies uh, that's the uh, Metcalf station building uh, which sits on the platform of the railway layout this is the little offending LMS tank loco which somewhere I put for safekeeping the bag of bits or the bits that are now in a bag uh, various little bits of rolling stock so way carefully you put this without it all ending up on the floor Some more bits there and in that bag is the um, guts of the tank engine loads of points There's a little dummy Scotsman that's just a static. Uh, uh, the uh, tender does the tender does rewheel and it's got a proper coupling on it. Something's just disappeared on the floor. Uh, another little box of rolling stock. Most of it is fairly intact. There's an odd buffer missing. Uh, down in there you can see some people, some more little buildings. There's about three of those little boxes. In here we have the little J94. I just put some foam around it to uh, stop it flying around in the box. haven't tried it on the track as I said, but uh, it does appear to run. I have got, well basically in those other two sets, a brand new one. Uh, I have picked up a few more wagons and I think I've got three or four Mark II BR coaches that I got from a guy a while back. Uh, and then there was all these other little sort of unfinished accessories, uh, buffer stops. It's like the engaged version of the uh, Pico. Logan gauges. I think that's another yeah, rail head buffer stop. Another one there. Yeah, two there. Remnants of people, some plate girder bridges. Two, uh, I don't know, what are they? Southern region coaches, I think. I don't know. Remnants of the pack of people and some little die cast vehicles. So as I showed you, probably easier if I do, if I can put the clip in of me picking it up with this in the van rather than doing the awkward side angle shot. I can't quite fit it in. It's only a small board about, I don't know, four, maybe four feet, three feet. As you can see, all nicely done. And uh, he sort of finished it off. He's decided to go to uh, do another one in his bedroom now. But we've got a little basic back scene cut. The station lives on there, not perfectly scaled, I suppose. But um, yeah, just a little basic layout. One little oval tunnel, an old drying controller. He said it all works. A couple of engine sheds, I don't know. Um, little plastic kits, those. Um, Good shed, you know, it's got a signal box, a little um, level crossing, lean to barns. Not quite finished, but uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'll do with it. I might just keep hold of it for now and uh, see what happens. Just use it as a little test test track for my um, engines when I get around to overhaul them, a bit like the other one I use. And uh, have a double O test track and a uh, N gauge test track. A little bit of damage there, but um, nothing a convenient little bush can't hide. And he's actually used real moss off his tiled roof. <laughs> so I don't know whether we might get any unwanted visitors in that or not. Um, so that'll probably go. But uh, 
he'd also put a little squeaky tin, biscuit tin, whatever it is, so that um, you can store your rolling stock in it. Enough room for a few coaches, wagons, and uh, maybe a loco or two. And uh, see, you could probably suppose you could do it as a little exhibition layout just to show people how easy it is if you are a bit cramped for space how small a layout you can have obviously if you'd have done this as a shunting layout um, you know you can do various shunting operations like uh, Angel Shears little layout and uh, you know the sort of various configurations of your shunting operations gives you a reasonable bit of uh, operational ability and so we've got two engine sheds a good shed siding over the other side we've got an end on platform so you know you can mess about with it so uh, and it's built on an old ironing board just a bit of uh, plywood screwed bolted straight through so you can pop it up and uh, have a little play on it and uh, I'll go back sideways again save you all bending your neck so it's, it's just about big enough for this small back bedroom which is about nine foot six by um, eight footish I think maybe a little bit less but as you can see this is um, thirsty work this railway modeling so you have to build yourself your own bar in your back bedroom <laughs> 